What's happening to YouTube? Swerk to here. Back out on the little guy, going down the lanes. It's a little bit, it's a little bit grotty right now, as you can see from the puddles. A lot of rain over the last few days, so there's maybe a mistake coming out on so fresh after that, but I'm sure we'll do fine. I've got me chunky King's tyres, which seem to be doing pretty well so far actually. I've not tried them before. Very, very cheap tyre. One of the cheapest I could find. But they've got a pleasing amount of tread to them. They're quite, they're not knobblies, but they've got a good bite to them. For this sort of road, this kind of rural road biased, but still with enough bite to get through a bit of gravel and a bit of mud and a bit of grot. And they've been really good so far. They haven't slid out or anything on me, which is tempting fate slightly, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I've got a question for you today, a little topic, which is... What was the last thing you created? When was the last time you created something? Something that's never been done, something unique. The reason I bring that up is I have this belief that everyone should be a maker of some kind. Or whatever that can be. It can be anything. It can be... Oh, beekeepers. That's cool. <laughs> Sorry, that completely derailed me. Just a couple of people in hazmat suits there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it can, it can be anything. Anything at all. You know, when we say creatives and creators, there's a tendency I think from perhaps society more than anything to assume that means artist that certainly is a type of creative but it's in no way the only one to be a maker and to be to be create stuff you can do anything it can be writing it can be poetry it can be cooking you can make your own recipes if you've got your own little individual twists on a recipe or your own type of you know baking and buns and whatever that you're making that's creating you can be a gardener you're creating a unique garden. That's a that's a creator. You can be a woodworker, designer, musician, and a thing. There's so many ways to make something, and I think it's incredibly important for the the human soul and the psyche to be able to be actually making stuff, because I think it's something that a lot of people don't get the chance to do anymore. A lot of people end up just being, particularly in this kind of Western capitalist society, people end up just being consumers. They either don't think that they're good enough, or they don't think they can be good enough, or they don't have the time, or the, or the money, or whatever. Like, there's so many barriers to creating. I really want to push the argument that actually there's not as many barriers as you probably think, and it's easier to become a maker than it might initially seem. So I've got lots of inspiration for makers, particularly multidiscipline makers. They can be Twitch streamers. I'm part of a community for a streamer who's actually not streamed for quite a while now, but when they used to stream, they're called Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N. They're an artist based out of LA in California. Older, sort of middle-aged woman, has a family, it does all of that. You know, she's worked in various jobs before. But for her streams, she just did making. She did art, she did painting and pencil work and sketching. She got into, also, she got into 3D printing. She got into resin cast. In. She uh, started a business making keycaps, like custom keycaps for keyboards. Because, you know, there's lots of glitter and sparkle and little models and stuff. I've got one on my keyboard, actually. I've got one of her early designs that, sadly, she didn't uh, continue with. It was a little bit labour-intensive for the money she was making on them. But it's a sort of planetary-based one. So the background is black. I'll put a picture up on screen. The background is black, and then there's a swirl, like a nebula, through it. And then on top of that is a literally a 3D... I think it was a clay, I think it was air-drying clay, but uh, literally a 3D planet. And then with a clear resin over the top with a little bit of sparkle. And it looks great. It looks really cool. And she like she did somewhere she, there are little fish she made, she sculpted these little tiny like um, koi and sort of put them in this oh it looks fantastic. It's such a cool streamer. She's a really lovely person as well. And we're hoping she's gonna get back to streaming at some point. So sort of life got in the way for a while. She did a wonderful amount of stuff and she did she came to it very, very late. She didn't start drawing at all, she didn't pick up a pencil until she was like 45 or something like that. She really came to it quite late and that's kind of proof in itself that it's never too late to pick something up and have a go. And like, yes, you know, you're not going to be as good as the kid who started when they were seven and never stopped. Like, of course, of course you're not. And, you know, I do get that mentality. It's better to do something not very well than to not do anything at all because it won't be perfect, you know? Like, jack of all trades, master of one kind of vibe. I'm actually going back up that way. I just wanted to come up here because dirt track. Which may prove to be a mistake given how muddy it is, but we'll see. It's only a short one. And it is, in you know, <laughs> I say dirt track, it is stoned and graveled. This is cool. I came up this way recently. I say recently. A little while ago. It's really cool. <laughs> Slight slip there. Yeah, it's really cool up here. It's like Jurassic Park this little track to here because it's all like ferns and foliage and it's really oh you'll see come around here 
look at this like let me just stop it on behind me you might see the picture of me on my instagram but like look how cool it looks like phones up to here big like forest sleeping away big tall trees above us it's so cool up here not as quiet as you might think this is you know this is england you can't get away from people ever so funny when i was taking pictures there last time i stopped and i pulled over for sort of five ten minutes bike was off as i was walking back to the bike i thought is that an engine can i hear an engine there i better get the fuck out of here then just in case and i kicked the bike on looked in my mirrors and a fucking morrison van came around the corner one of the delivery vans i guess he was using this as like a ratway or maybe one of his houses was on this side track or something but he came barreling around the corner i'm like oh oh my god and i had to go hooning off down here with no gloves on like <laughs> wasn't quite ready for it but there's nowhere to there was nowhere to pull in he's got like, quite a wide vehicle he's there hedge bashing on both sides like funny funny times but yeah, megan megan's great and she's a, an inspiration to us all for that just have a go and see what happens kind of making another one a more famous one is adam savage formerly of the mythbusters now works at a company called tested he's very proudly a maker he talks a lot about being a maker and he's done all sorts of multi-discipline stuff he used to work for industrial light and magic making props for like star wars and stuff like that so he's got this wonderful workshop he's got a youtube channel under tested just constantly he's making stuff he makes all sorts of like shop mods and bits and pieces of his shop he makes movie props and things for display and oh he's such a talented individual seems really like well grounded well rounded as well i've been very inspirational to listen to but again he talks a lot about the importance of making and even if it's small stuff and how important like prop making if you, you see a movie that you like and you want a prop it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one, incredibly perfect movie replica you can have a great deal of enjoyment from just a cheap little you know make a lightsaber out of a painted tube and a, and a you know some cardboard or whatever and like he says that cardboard so that everyone's gateway into making because it's cheap and accessible you can go to shops and pick up their old boxes that can gain you entry into it uh, i don't know where the christ i am oh no i do know where i am okay we'll go this way which we head out towards like minions in my usual sort of way fellas but yeah like adam's wonderful and again you don't need to be perfect you just need to have a go and that's quite an important mentality that's something i struggle with and i think it's something a lot of people struggle with is i find it hard to motivate myself to try something when i know i'm not gonna be good at it and as a result it's difficult to get through the stage where you suck to gain the skills i tend to think myself out of doing stuff quite a lot and end up kind of going oh actually why bother i won't be good at it sort of thing and that's completely the wrong mindset to have that's completely the wrong mentality and it holds me back a lot it holds me back from from art from youtube stuff even it's a real it can be a real hindrance sometimes and learning to push past that and just have a go is 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 very important to becoming a maker and again i think becoming a maker is so important to everyone's like souls people's mental health would benefit a lot if they had that outlet of being able to sort of express themselves in whatever they happen to be creating in once you have an outlet of that you you physically have something at the end of it and you can look at it and go i did that and be proud of it and you can hold it in your hands and go i did that that is unique in this world this is a one-of-a-kind item no one else has exactly this thing one important thing about being a maker and this idea of just jumping and having a go is obviously there's a barrier in terms of financially of of entry for a lot of these disciplines there are some that are a lot more expensive than others oil painting is a lot more expensive than gouache the point is that being a maker in general does not cost a lot of money certain disciplines do but there are always cheap ways that you can scratch the same itch for a lot less it does cost money to get nice sketching paper with a high gsm rating it costs money to get sketching pencils and so on but you can start sketching with a pack of hb pencils on printer paper you can start doing ink sketching on biros and actually that's a very common starting point it's a very pleasant medium biros because there's no razor there's no undo once you've drawn it's drawn that in itself can actually be quite helpful learning to let go of perfection and kind of live with the flaws that you're going to get as a result it gives you a, a childish enjoyment of it because we all start with doodles doodles when we're at school inside of our notebooks and on, on our homework it's people sit and doodle when they're on the phone and back when we used to have landlines <laughs> you can get into that very pick up a, a big pack of printer paper for very very cheap, a few quid if you get just cheap basic white printer paper you can get a pack of biros for a couple of quid and then for under a fiver you've got hours and hours and hours and hours of possibilities for starting to create fucking hell <laughs> try not to spray myself 
So we're back backtracking down Jurassic Park here, which is apparently slightly wetter on this side of the road. God, I really need to get some brush guards for this little bike. <laughs> I'm getting absolutely hedge bash trying to avoid the sort of middle slippery section. Now luckily the clutch on this is so sort of floppy and flimsy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> may have slightly locked the rear there, I don't know if you quite heard that. Well, good to know the brakes are strong enough to lock the wheel, at least in the wet. <laughs> well, I'm glad that was a smaller branch, so I went straight over it. That would have been an actual tree, I'd have been, uh, I'd have been in all sorts of trouble there. What was I saying? saying? Oh, the hill start. Nothing like a small bike with a big guy trying to go up quite a legitimately steep hill. It's always fun in these conditions because you have to try and carry momentum because it's a 125, but then you also don't want to try and corner too hard because you'll slide out. <laughs> That's to the excitement though, doesn't it? Oh, a little bit of sun poking through, beautiful. Um, but yeah, like you can get into creating from a very, very cheap standpoint with... With... Uh, Byros and with pencils, with crayons, and well, that's just with art stuff, but that same applies to everything really. There's always a cheaper way in, like if you want to make music, instruments cost a lot of money, but you can get like Garage Band is on all of the Apple products, okay, they're expensive in themselves, but there are alternatives. There are programs that do the same thing, Linux, even I used to have one on my Linux laptop that was the same thing you could make music with. You can make songs, you don't need the best microphone, you can just record onto your phone and your headphones. I mean, look at like TikTok. Do you remember the Wellerman when that was kicking off? The uh, sea shanty guy, and they had those all those like wonderful collaborations from a bunch of people. A lot of them, they were just singing through their headphone mic. They were holding up the headphone wired in-ear headphone mic up to their mic and singing through that. None of them were singing on microphones. It's one of those where, obviously I've grown up with like, money, so I appreciate how much of a barrier it can be to a lot of things you want to get on and do, but there are ways that you can give yourself that creative outlet, any creative outlet, without it costing the earth. Even this, even YouTube, like I'm using a GoPro now and it's obviously better than my old camera but you can, st I started out with a, a 40 quid action camera I had an audio recorder which I didn't even pay for, I bartered that from a fellow vlogger, Cornish Biker he wasn't using it so I made him his channel art, his uh, logo and his header art for his YouTube he then gave me the audio recorder, but even with a microphone and for less than 50 quid I was using a, a free editing software, open source editing software. Ow. <laughs> oh my god. To the face. Yeah, I was using like open source editing software, so I started making videos for probably less than 50 quid investment. And that's quite obtainable even to people with a, with very low incomes. You can scrape together 50 quid if you want, uh, for the most part. And then like modelling, like you, you know, you can make sculptures out of anything. You make sculptures out of your own recycling bottles. Do you, I remember Art Attack back in the day? That's one of the things that sort of inspired me to be creative when I was a kid was watching Neil Buchanan on Art Attack and also Mark Spate on Smart. Rest in peace to Mark there. That was fucking tr tragic, wasn't it? Art Attack inspired me a lot and if you look at their modelling, you look at it, there's a lot of it on YouTube now. A lot of their models they created for creatures and castles and they made like a waste paper bin at one point that was like a monster's mouth, like one of those novelty ones. But all of that was just like recycling to make the skeleton covered with paper mache. And paper mache is just PVA glue, newspaper and the kitchen roll, like layered alternately. That's a very affordable cheap thing as well. When I was at uni I made a puppet as one of my projects and I made a, a marionette dinosaur and it was a fully quite cool dinosaur the head and the neck. I f am I back here again? I am. <laughs> I'll try and avoid that log this time shall I? Log. Stick. <laughs> but yeah like that, that's a very very affordable thing. I made this marionette puppet and the body was uh, a bottle, a coke bottle, the head was a coke can, the hip joints or the, the bits I was hiding the hip joints in were Muller corner pots, the legs were sticks, the actual uh, marionette like the cross beam that you control it with, that was sticks as well, just from like I literally had sticks out here and then I covered it all in paper mache and I painted it with the cheapest, crappiest goo ash I could find and it looked great and it was a really cool puppet like when you moved, when you walked it with the cross beam because of the way I'd wired the legs, the legs like cl like clenched up when you lift them so you could really make it take quite convincing steps and then by having the head and the tail as free swinging you could quite kind of like, you could really puppeteer it quite nicely 
And it was really cool, and then I got a really shit grade for it. It really pissed me off to this day. I mean, I'm not at all salty about that, which was like seven years ago, eight years ago, how long that was I graduated. The point is, it didn't cost me a lot to have quite a cool outcome. And you can apply that model making to anything. And the first thing I want to say is, a lot of people don't think of themselves as creative. They wouldn't call themselves a creative, they certainly wouldn't call themselves an artist, but everyone, I think more than they know, everyone has a creative ability that they maybe don't utilise in their job, or they don't utilise in their their day-to-day -day life. This hill is a challenge for this little bike, isn't it? Good grief. Yeah, one CG. Oh, I wish I had a rev kind of. <laughs> People maybe overlook their own abilities, their own creativity. They don't realise their own potential for this sort of thing, but I want to use my dad as uh, as a reference for that and slightly poignant because today's Father's Day so I'm a fucking joy to be around today but yeah my old man like he wasn't an artist per se I don't know if he would call himself creative but at the same time he had these moments where he was like in my bedroom they blanked off my fireplace because we couldn't afford to light it obviously <laughs> and, um, so they blanked it off so it wasn't like making the house colder as a draft and he painted on that front he painted this like random scene of like weird birds and like mushroom cottages and thank you it was really cool I mean it was quite eclectic because I believe he was stoned when he did it but <laughs> it, was, it was quite cool and again like he had these moments where he would suddenly be creative, like yeah, the garden was a perfect example. He had this vision for the garden, and he wasn't a garden, he was a, he was a builder by trade. He, he worked in the building sites and stuff. But I guess buildings, and building in of itself is a form of creativity, because you're having to think your way through a 3D problem, create something that out of raw materials, out of nothing. So actually, like, builders and carpenters and joiners, and a lot of people like that are actually quite creative in of just the way that their brain's wired to, to sort of think through. He sort of stacked it, he layered it because it was on a hill, so he's layered it to make it more usable. He built this kind of jungle hut that was really cool, like a sort of pagoda thing. He built me a sand, cast, a sand pit that was in the shape of a boat, it looked like a little like dinghy. It had a mast, it had a proper mast and a sail that you could l raise and lower, it was a big heavy tarpaulin thing. And it looked great and then next to it was a beach and then the water was like dark blue slate and then he did this concrete beach edge and there was pebbles behind it and he made rock pools and sculpted all of that and like that's wonderfully creative it's actually something i'm going to replicate when i get my own garden a lot of those designs and styling cues that i'm going to bring into my own i'm going to make a flower bed that looks like a boat and a lot of that i really enjoyed and again with like even with art when he was sick and he was he couldn't walk around or go out and do anything i don't know where he asked for pencils colored pencils and paper and he, he started doing these little sketches i mean he didn't do them for very long unfortunately because he, he very quickly lost the motor function to do stuff with but he wasn't sitting there making art on his weekends or his free times or his evening but his, he still had a creative brain and if he'd had the chance or the push to explore that more in life who knows what he could have come up with you know i guess that's part of my message is don't wait too long to have a go and give it a bash give it a try get a borrow everyone's got pens i guarantee everyone watching this has a pen and paper in their house because everyone does just for taking notes or whatever you know get a get a pen and sketch something anything doodle whatever the first thing comes to your mind if you can't think of anything you can look up online art prompts and you can you can google and there are sites where like you type in you just go oh i want a character and it will generate you like oh you know a knight medieval knight with a, an armor and a whatever like you know you can find these things and you, you don't have to be able to draw it perfectly but you can just doodle a little silly doodle and you can start to give yourself the the gift of this creative outlet for nothing and maybe you won't find it interesting maybe you need to find a different discipline maybe you don't enjoy the sketching but you will enjoy modifying recipes maybe you'll enjoy gardening maybe you'll enjoy poetry song making like anything it's something that actually I, I need to take my own advice on this stuff more really because as I say I struggle with this things this sort of thing because it's let me find some more gears <laughs> uh, I struggle with it because it's hard for me to do stuff that I'm bad at and hard for me to like get that momentum going much like the CG on a hill it's hard to get the ball rolling <laughs> but like I do bits and pieces I do, I do a little bit of digital art I got some air drying clay for Christmas so I've made a couple of little critters with 
I'm actually, I've got to save my own preachings. I'm going to actually go home after this and make something more. And just, again, something, uh, just a little monster, a little creature, a little whatever. It doesn't have to be good. Actually, monsters, monsters are quite a good place to start because they don't have to look like anything. So you can make it look like whatever you want and it's, it's still a monster. And if it looks a bit weird, the proportion's a bit weird, it's still a monster. That's the point of it. So that's quite a good place to start, whatever discipline you're going for. Fellas? But yeah, so I do a little bit of air drying clay. Like, I'm looking at getting into 3D modelling, digital 3D modelling again. So things like Blender and ZBrush and stuff like that, like these 3D sculpting programmes. So I do I do bits and pieces and obviously I, and then I do YouTube. And as much as I don't do YouTube very well, it is still a very important creative outlet to me. It's something I enjoy doing. My videos, yes, they might not be great, but they're mine. No one else has a video like mine. No one else says the things I say, records in the way I record edits in the way I edit like it's all unique it's a thing that didn't exist that I made exist and like, even if it's not the best it can still be it can still have worth and still have value <laughs> do you mind do you mind narrow lanes love them oh hello uh yeah <laughs> thank you very much see you right there see you right there hatchback that's why I got through there is that a bit of SUV she was driving? No chance. I'd have had to turn around there. So I'm going to leave that here because I've been chatting for quite a while now. I don't know how long this video is. If there's a message to take from this, my sort of overarching message is it's good for the soul. It's good for your mental health. It's good for you as a person to have a creative outlet, a way that you can express yourself in whatever medium, whatever form it takes. Particularly if you're a dude as well, like men, British men, in particular, we're not always so good with our words. So it's good to have a way to speak without speaking, to express yourself and to be able to, to make something and then hold it in your hand, or digitally, but like hold, hold it in your hand physically and go, I did that, I made that, I, that exists because of me. And that is something that no one can take away from you. No one. And I, I urge all of you, I really do, doodle, do something. Like, it doesn't have to, you don't have to go and buy a bunch of materials and become an artist overnight and become the next like Rembrandt or Michelangelo, but it just do something. It will be good for you. <laughs> it will be good for me. And I'm, I'm going to try and take my own advice and uh, do more myself as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you do create and I think artists, you create a creator, craftsman, woodsman, carpenter, gardener, baker, whatever discipline you come from if you do make stuff tell me about it get in the comments get in the comments right now and just tell me you'll say hey i made a, i baked a cake today even if you follow the recipe the cake is still unique you're not a factory there's going to be differences in everything tell me about it tell me about you know tell me what the last thing tell me the last thing you created not necessarily assembled saying like oh, i put together some ikea furniture that's not the same tell me what you created and tell me how long it's been since you created something, because I bet it's longer than you think when you actually come to think about it. That's me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Ride safe and have a wonderful day.